Hello there geographers and welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video we're going to be looking at important cartographers and geographers of the past. We'll be analyzing kind of what are their accomplishments and how did they help form human geography that we'll be studying in this class and also how they impact cartography. So stick around as we explore some significant old people. Before we get started, make sure you take out your guided notes. You can find the guided notes in the description below. The guided notes go right along with the video. I've created the guided notes to help you remember all the important information. We're going to be talking about a lot of different people in this video and also a lot of different types of maps and accomplishments that all of these different people did. And it'll be hard to remember all the information. So use the guided notes. They will help you. And that way when you're studying for your quiz or test or the AP test or whatever it may be, you don't have to go back and rewatch all the videos. You'll be able to just look at your notes. So hopefully by the end of this course, you'll have a nice study guide filled out already. So use the guided notes. You can find them in the description below. Now enough of me talking about guided notes and other things. Let's get on to learning about cartography. One of the most important tools of a geographer is a map. And the process of making a map is known as cartography. Now a map is a two-dimensional model of the Earth's surface. And they've changed a lot. Originally maps were used as just a way of getting from one place to another. But over the years maps have continued to evolve and change. And you might not even have realized this. I mean we don't think about maps a lot in our day to day lives. Minus of course a GPS on your phone and Apple Maps and Google Maps and whatever you may use. But that's really the extent that most people use maps for. But for geographers they're much more complicated and useful. Today, maps can show inequalities in society, how we use resources. We still can see how to get from one point to another, but we have layered maps with complex sets of data, and maps have become extremely useful tools. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how maps have changed over the years, going back to where they started in their earliest forms. So make sure you pay attention as now we explore a bunch of cartographers and geographers that have made cartography the process of making maps, what it is today. Our first cartographer, geographer that we're going to be looking at is Eratosthenes. Now he was a Greek scholar and he actually came up with the word geography. Geo meaning earth and graphy meaning to write, to write down the earth. Now we're not going to go into a ton of detail on all of these different cartographers and geographers. We're going over just some of the basics. There's a ton more information that we're not going to cover in this video because quite frankly we don't need to know every single thing. It's just important to understand where we've come from. Now Eratosthenes is credited for being one of the first people to actually record the Earth's surface to create the first world map. Now the world map that he created was very different than what we would have today. Remember back then they didn't have everything discovered yet. And actually a lot of the early maps too depicted the sides of the earth as they knew it as it sometimes was flat and eventually evolved becoming round as they continued to discover more and more with these like mythical creatures and monsters on the sides. And that was the unknown area. So Eratosthenes is the one who created the term geography and also is credited for making the first world map. Our next cartographer is Ptolemy and he created a world map that was used for over a thousand years. He also published a book, The Manuscript of Geography, that broke down his process. The first book and the first part was explaining how he collected his data and how he got his information. The second was a list of different topical areas and also all of the different captions for his maps. Now he got all of his data and information through merchants and traders of the time and tried to create well, at least what he believed the most accurate depiction of the world that we at that time knew of. Now over time we started to see map making really slow down especially in Europe. His map gets used for over a thousand years and we don't see a lot of innovation. Actually after Ptolemy created his world map we started to see less of a mathematical and more accurate approach to map making and more of an artistic twist. Remember I've already talked about how eventually we saw these big monsters come and they were formed around the map to show kind of the edge and this invasion and kind of a scary area and that is what we started to see take off. We saw maps become more artistic and less focused on innovating the actual map making process. Moving from Europe to China, we're going to be now talking about Pei Shu. He is the father of Chinese cartography and he did a lot in the process of map making. 
Remember, right now, Europe, they've decided to kind of slow down. They're not that interested in advancing the geographic thought. However, Peixu was. He created one of the first grid systems to be used for maps and also implemented the first time scale. He became kind of obsessed of trying to make sure that maps were able to show exactly where locations were and also estimate the correct distances in relation to the Earth's surface. So this was a big advance for map making. The majority of his maps were also produced on silk. So we start to see maps now start to evolve, no longer just for showing trade routes and other things there, but now starting to get more detailed and even trying to become more accurate. Moving to the west of China, we have Mohammed Adrisi, who worked for the King of Sicily to make one of the most accurate maps known at least at that time. And Mohammed Adrisi, he used lines of longitude to help make his map more accurate. He based all of his information off of Arabic text and Greek text, along with first-hand accounts and eyewitness reports, trying to collect as much information as possible to make a new map of the Earth that would project everything accurately. As time continued to move and more and more of the world got discovered, we had Martin Walsamer. He was a German cartographer who's credited with being one of the first people to actually label America on the map. So the new world started to be discovered. Maps are now getting even bigger as more of the world becomes known and less is unknown. In 1570, we have Abraham Ortelius, who created the first modern atlas of the world. It was known as the theater of the world, or the Theretium. We start to now see the world is being explored and known, and maps have now started to take new shapes and are producing new information that was never known before. So we can see that more of the world is being discovered. We also can see that cartography has started to expand and has changed over the years. But we also have new schools of thought coming to just the concept of geography. One of the people who introduced the concept of regional geography instead of just global, which at the time had only been practiced, was Berhardus Varanius. Now, I might have butchered his name, so I apologize on the pronunciation. But in 1650, he produced the book Geography Geronalis. And now, I know I definitely butchered that. So again, I apologize for my horrible accents and attempted pronunciation. But this was a big deal. He started to create more of a scientific basis. He wanted it to be more focused on data collection, on analyzing the current day life, and trying to figure out more that we can prove through science. So geography starts to become more rooted in scientific fact. And now also again, the introduction of regional geography is introduced and is starting to be practiced. And in the 1800s, geography started to change even more. We have George Perkins Marsh, who started the conversation that natural systems were actually impacted and influenced by human actions, that we started to see this kind of back and forth between the environment and society. We have Carl Serra, an American geographer, who talked about this concept of the cultural landscape. One of the first to do so actually created the term cultural landscape. He believed that the cultural landscape should be the main study of human geography. So we start to see a lot of changes. Cultural landscape is going to be one of our big concepts that we talk about. It'll come up in almost every unit throughout this whole year. So that one is definitely an important one to understand. As you can see, over the years, cartography and geography have changed a lot. Starting off of just a basic way of showing the known Earth, to eventually getting into a scale and location and trying to show distance, then being used for trade routes and navigation, all the way up to more current day where we're looking at the cultural landscape. We're now using it in ways we never thought possible with computers being able to layer data on there to show inequality and also to show new ways of interpreting information. It's a completely different world than it used to be. And I don't just mean discovered wise. Throughout our course, we're gonna be exploring a lot of different maps. We're gonna be looking at geography from a way you've probably never thought of before. And hopefully by the end of the course, you'll be able to understand a whole new world. Now, I know those are some big promises, but trust me, by the time we're done with this human geography course, you'll be looking at things from a completely different lens. I hope this video helped you better understand some of the important cartographers and geographers of the past. Again, it was a quick look. We don't need to spend too much time as we are going to have to spend our time elsewhere. But make sure you subscribe and support the channel. This will then give you notifications when I post more human geography content and it helps me out. 
helps me making more videos. So thank you again for your time and patience, cooperation, all that jazz. And until next time, I'm Mr. Sin, and I will see you online.